Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. That is the silly name we give to our unboxing videos because I am about to check in a new game to my collection and to the Tabletop Bellhop Hotel, which I concierge for. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge. I'm working with you to make your game nights better. I'm answering your gaming and game night questions with the question being, what's in the box in regards to this, this shiny new shrink Crapped game sitting in front of me that was kindly sent to me by the op or USAopoly. This is a copy of Disney Sorcerer's Arena Epic Alliances Core Set. Did you get all that? Because that's the full title of the game. Uh, we're probably just going to call it Sorcerer's Arena going for, forward. I have a habit of wanting to call it Epic Duels, which is a totally different game. But it keeps getting in my head Disney Epic Duels. This isn't Disney Epic Duels. It's Disney Sorcerer's Arena Epic Alliance's core set. This is um, basically a skirmish miniature battle game put together by the op featuring Disney characters that let you mix and match and battle against different foes and villains. And I think it's three character teams. Now, I will admit I have not played this game. I actually don't do much, know much about this game other than it looks cool and I agreed to check it out. So we're going to start off by cracking the shrink on this box and taking a look at what you get inside. All right, so here you have it, my copy of Disney, sorry, Disney Sorcerer's Arena Epic Adventures Core Set. See, it's all here. Uh, we're going to start just kind of show off the box. Um, Most notable thing is that there's this cardboard sleeve at the bottom, obviously put there for marketing purposes. So, you know, it says the name of the game, because I have a feeling the name of the game isn't on the front of the box otherwise. And it's got like this thing showing the different characters that come in it. So we're gonna slide that off. There it goes, that came off. And honestly, the back's the same. So it's kind of strange. It's got exactly the same stuff. The front though, now kind of looks like a chest. And it's kind of cool because there's like a lock and everything here, but it's all just graphics. It's not like I can unlock my set and open it up. Um, just flip through the different sides here. And here we have the box, which introduces the game. All right, we start right away with a QR code. So that's kind of cool. Learn to play the game. So unlike me, who hasn't actually figured this game out at all before opening it, once you open it, you can scan this QR code and I'm sure get a video of how to play. Then we have the Summoner's Handbook sitting right on top. Again, it's cool. It looks like a book, you know, and you got your key to unlock it. I'm just going to flip through this quickly. Great looking component list here. That looks excellent. A nice introduction, table of contents. Everything looks very positive here. Nice big text, lots of uh, examples and graphics here. I know there's like a really neat system here for tra tracking the turn order. Uh, how cards work, how the turn order tiles work, how to set up the board, the how to build the miniatures, because there is a bit of assembly here. I should say standees, I guess, instead of miniatures. I like these nice color-coded callouts. Looks like a solid book. Status effects, how to track things. Chapter 2, I wonder if you can play right after Chapter 1. Yep, that's exactly it. You play through. So there's like an introduction version of the game, followed by a more complicated, more difficult, I'm sure, more character version of the game. And then there's a chapter three. So you almost have like a legacy element here where they introduce more rules as you go on all the way up to chapter four, which looks like you're adding in status effects or elements and then team play. Cool. Um, huge list of play testers. Wow, that's good to see. And then some special rules for playing with teams and then a nice summary of at least the status effects on the back. Everything looks good there. That is an impressive looking rule book. All right, next we have cardboard punch outs. A significant number of them, it seems like. So these are all the different status effects, cursed, flustered, and so on. I don't know what the little Mickey check marks are like, but I just want to kind of zoom that in so you can kind of see it's a little Mickey symbol. I know I'm, I'm getting blurry when I get that close. So you can see it. What I do dig here is there's symbols as well as words, uh, which may make this accessible for younger kids. We have more status effects and coins. Oh, what I didn't do is flip these. I should probably do that quick. Honestly, they're the same on both sides. So you're not missing anything with this one. Uh, same thing. So two-sided tokens. More status effects. Again, two-sided. Same thing on both sides. 
Then we have the initiative trackers for the the various characters that are in this particular game. Uh, interestingly, it's like a, a new art. Like that doesn't look like existing Disney art they use. There's there's new art on these, and I'm guessing that's like a first player marker. Then we get to the board. We'll see if this actually fits on camera. Probably should. It's not a huge board. Really close. You can basically get it. It's a, it's a two-sided board that you get one side on this side, then you have control points in the middle to fight over. Nice hex size board, nice big squares. Standees, we'll get to those in a bit. Rings that go around the standees. Oh, check it out, nice dividers for the cards. I dig that. We got a spot for oversized cards here for the main character cards. So we have Gaston. I want to zoom, but then I don't want to have to zoom back because I always forget. Aladdin. Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey. Scully. Doctor, I don't even know who this is. Doctor Fasselier. I don't know what Disney he's from. Ariel. Maleficent, Demona, and I love the fact gargoyles are in here. That's a Disney lace I love. Oh, and then we have reference cards. So four character reference cards that explain the game. Those look awesome. Okay, I'm confused. Oh, they're different for, okay, sorry. I totally missed it. So it's chapter one and two reference because generally it's a two player game. And then you get into chapter three and four reference. So additional reference is added. We're gonna put those back. Nice, uh, card quality is decent. It's card. Uh, they are not like laminated or anything. They don't seem to have any like linen finish. But again, these are just reference cards. Um, spot to put the stuff, right? Once you punch everything out of these cardboard, you got somewhere to put it. Appreciate that. Then we get to the cards because this is actually a card driven skirmish battle game. So you got lots of cards. Alrighty. Boom. Here are the cards. So we have a whole bunch of Gaston cards, and it looks like you get multiples of the same cards. So like he's got Brawler, Fury, Shove, Sheer Bravado, Shrug It Off, Let's Dance, and that's it. So these are all Gaston cards. They have different symbols on them and so on. Backs are, of course, all the same. Uh, card, the art, I think might be new. Well, it looks like these could be movie stills. I don't think they are. I think that's actually new Disney artwork on these, especially like that. Looks nice. I am going to assume we're going to split them this way. So then we have Aladdin cards. I'm going to go through these fairly quick. And I'm just going to shove Aladdin in here. Mickey. I'm going to forget the characters' names. Scully. Fasole. One thing I gotta say people are gonna be happy about is it sure looks like there's room for sleeve cards here. I do not tend to sleeve my cards, but there is lots of extra space here for sleeving. Maleficent. And finally, Demona. Sully, not Scully. No, you're right, it is Sully. S-U-L-L-E-Y, my bad. Again, not a huge Disney watcher. Okay, next, we're gonna take a look at these cool plastic components and it for that, we're gonna move the box uh, completely off camera. The red player and the blue player. Then you have these, which are the standees. Now, the one thing you're gonna note right away is they look kind of dull. That is because all of these have plastic coatings on them. So here you have Mickey who looks all dull. Well, they're actually protected with a coating on both sides, which is always difficult to get off. Here is where I could definitely use that hobby knife to kind of peel it off. There we go. Magically, Mickey now has, so you can kind of see the standy here. Unfortunately, it's reflecting my webcam. So translucent, 
standees that you can actually see through except for the art. They're two-sided, so you actually get the back of making. If you actually look at it, it's two acrylic standees glued together, which is actually pretty cool to get the effect of it. Now, what I need to do is I need to find Mickey's base. Oh, there's little labels. So on these, they tell you which character they go with, and it's just like a three-letter code. So like that's them. I'm looking for Mickey here. DRF, I'm assuming, is not Mickey. Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey. That's got to be it. <laughs> All right. Now, of course, I also have to get the plastic film off this. All right. Here you have the base for Mickey. And what you're going to do is slot Mickey into that base. Um, I don't know if he has a particular sp facing. But you're also, what you're going to do is when you go to play is this disc goes over top. And I don't have it lined up very well here. And it is also your health tracker. All right, so here you can see Mickey and his base. So you got awesome looking Mickey here on his 3D stand and his base. And then you have the disc on top. And this is actually like a health tracker where he starts at eight and you turn it. So it goes down and then down to six and so on. You turn it and unlike like hero clicks, it's just if you look at the bottom, it's kind of a gear shape. So you kind of lift up just a little bit, turn and put back down. And that way, when you're moving the figure, their health isn't going to change. So here you have Mickey on his base. I said cool looking figures. All right, so I just took way too long to assemble four of these miniatures, um, way longer than it should have taken. Getting this film off is a pain in the butt. It really is. This is this is annoying. Um, so I've done half of them so I can kind of show off what these look like. So I'm going to show off. I already showed you Mickey, but I'll do it again just so you can kind of see. So here we have Sorcerer's Arena Mickey on the very clear base with the tracking dial for tracking the health. Then we've got Ariel, which like I said, the art's really nice. Like that is, that's a quality component right there. I like the, the thickness of the plastic, the way it feels. And again, you've got the base with the tracking. Then we have Sully from Monsters Inc. And again, look at that, like that. You know what? I think it works extra good for this because Disney movies are two dimensional. This looks like a Disney character come to life. I really appreciate that, right? And they're they're two dimensional. They don't look so good on the side. And I think it fits really well. And then we have Demona from from Gargoyles, which again, really cool looking miniatures. But wow, is this film a pain in the butt to get off? So now we're gonna put these back into the box and wrap things up. So as I noted earlier. You've got a spot to put these right in here. So we're going to do that. So I guess I like the, again, the look of the box. I like that look. Um, the sleeve, I'm not going to bother. So there's a sleeve that can go on the bottom of this. Back together again. There you have what you get in the box for Disney Sorcerer's Arena Epic Alliances core set, the first box in a new series of Disney-based skirmish battle games featuring acrylic standees and a bunch of your favorite characters. Uh, there are expansions coming for this soon, um, but this is just the core set, which comes with eight characters that are over a mix of different Disney uh, franchises. I gotta say, I was impressed by pretty much everything in this box. Rulebook looks fantastic, looks really well written. Um, there's almost a legacy aspect to it where you unlock new things, so you complete chapter one, play a few games chapter one then unlock chapter two with some new rules all the way to chapter six so it looks like this game has some fantastic onboarding something i really like to see also the component quality was excellent the box is um nice and solid with a very good box insert which included divider well divided areas not dividers but divided areas for each of the characters cards um which also seem to fit sleeved cards don't take my word for it but it really does look like you could sleeve those cards with no problem it's not something i tried and of course there are the plastic standees which look fantastic fantastic, feel fantastic, and look great on the table. I appreciate how they kind of look like two-dimensional um, cells from an actual animation. That's a nice touch. What I don't like is there is a film on both sides of them. It is a real pain in the butt to get off. But you know what? That's a one-time problem. You do it once. When you've unboxed the game, you get it done. You never have to deal with it again. But they are a pain to get off. If anyone has any tips for how to get those off, I would love to hear it. 
So that's it for my unboxing of Disney's Sorcerer's Arena Epic Alliances core set from the op, which you should be able to find all over in stores, mass market, as well as hobby channels, which is kind of cool. As for finding things, you can find me at tabletopbellhop.com, all over the internet and social media as tabletopbellhop, one word. And... You can find me at Patreon at patreon.com slash tabletop bellhop. If you appreciated this video, it'd be awesome if you tipped your bellhop. That's it for my Disney Sorcerer's Arena Epic Alliance's corset. Way too long a name unboxing. Thank you for joining me. <laughs>